Welcome to Port St. Lucie. This is Professor Teferro for lesson one of Western Response to the Belt and Road. Um, this lesson is probably one of the more important lessons in this course, unless you completely understand um, what the Belt and Road consists of, it'll be difficult for you to um, make opinions about Western responses to the Belt and Road. So uh, without any further ado, let me quickly review uh, what you should have learned in um, a previous course. Um, the Belt and Road Initiative was created by Xi Jinping in 2013 uh, in China. And um, it is a very, very ambitious plan uh, to increase uh, trade in several international sectors of the world at the same time. And um, this plan uh, is extremely, extremely expensive, running into the trillions of dollars. And it requires a great deal of uh, planning and execution for infrastructure as well as negotiating and completing uh, agreements with over 100 countries. Right now, they have agreements with over 70 countries. So um, they have been partially successful at the very least. Uh, with this partial success, uh, it is imperative upon Western powers to try and maintain their market shares in these corridors that China is going to um, create for the Belt and Road. Um, your market share does not stay stable just because you know uh, you have a market there now. Um, if uh, China continues to build infrastructure and continues to um, increase their uh, participation in uh, economic activity in these major corridors that go through Central Asia and uh, Russia and Northern Europe, and uh, the maritime route through uh, all of Oceania and up the Suez Canal and through the EU. That's uh, three-fifths of the world. So um, it's imperative upon um, Western countries and Western multinationals, uh, multinational companies, um, to uh, have a response for this incursion. Um, there are three primary routes. Uh, you have the uh, maritime route, uh, which uh, goes from uh, China to uh, Vietnam, to Singapore, to Sri Lanka, and then on to uh, Djibouti and uh, Saudi Arabia, and then to uh, Egypt, and then to uh, the Mediterranean. Um, at some point in the Mediterranean, they have a choice of going to either Greece or Italy, to possibly continue on by bullet train to uh, Germany. Um, that's the maritime route. Um, the southern overland route goes through northern China. Uh, it may emanate from Beijing. It could emanate from uh, Xi'an. Um, but wherever it starts, it goes through Urumqi, uh, which is a, a large a uh, Muslim populated city in the northern part of uh, China. So um, this may turn out to be a, a good thing for the Chinese economy if they can involve the Muslim population of Rumshi in the, um, the southern overland route. Uh, the southern overland route uh, leaves Rumshi and goes into Kazakhstan, which is a Muslim country as well. Uh, and uh, it goes into Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and it goes into Iran, which is a, of great concern to the West. Uh, and then after it goes into Iran, it ends up in Turkey. And uh, Turkey is a former, or uh, some people uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. would like to think that Turkey is a current um, ally of the United States. And uh, to some extent they are, but um, if there's one thing one learns in political science right away is that money dictates uh, who your allegiance is to. Um, if Turkey is making more money with the United States, it will stay an ally of the United States. 
if Turkey is making more money with China, they're going to be an ally of China. So um, that's pretty much how it works uh, for the uh, southern overland route. Uh, then you have the uh, northern overland route, which uh, also emanates in Beijing. What a coincidence. And uh, goes to uh, Siberia, directly north. And it goes all along the Siberian Railroad through Siberia until it reaches Moscow, at which point uh, in time it may go to uh, one of three places. It can go south to uh, Germany. It can continue um, west to the Scandinavian countries. Um, or it can go a little bit southeast and go to the Eastern European countries. So um, the Northern Overland Route has a great number of uh, potential final destinations. And each country involved will have their own strategy. And China will have their own strategy for each of these countries as well. So that's what you need to know about the basics of the Belt and Road Initiative. And now, um, tomorrow or the next day, we will have a lesson on um, some of the other aspects of this course. This is Professor DeFerro from Fort St. Lucie wishing you all a happy and healthy night. Take care.